Once again, I would like to thank uh, Professor Sanjeev and uh, for Professor Mark Selansky and the Organizing Committee for the opportunity to give this talk about the new era of early diagnosis of congenital heart disease at 12 to 13 weeks of gestation. And once again, I want to say that I wish so much to be with you today. We planned it for long ago. And in this regard, I would like to dedicate this talk to our many friends and colleagues who were victims of the heinous terrorist attacks committed against Israel on the 7th of October. So, um, there is a rethinking of the timing of the anatomy scanning and the nuclear translucency in the light of the cellular free DNA revolution. And actually I published this cartoon uh, at January 21 and I, I think that now I came to the conclusion that it's really feasible. So what I recommend, I unlike what we have previously, that any dating scan and NAPT at about 10 weeks. NAPT is covered by many authorities around the world and, and he plays anti. Anatomy scan, which integrate the, the nuclear translucency and, and, and the scanning, and then mid trimester anatomy scan and third trimester anatomy scan will indicate it. Why, and this is what is depicted here, so the cell-free DNA, now about two years ago, and the nuclear translucency, and to, get to check for anomalies in the fetal heart and, and other systems in, in the fetal body, but we will concentrate on fetal heart today. And now there is evidence. Meta-analysis of the first semester detection of fetal heart anomalies, we can say that this is many, many kinds of uh, fetal heart anomalies. And the sensitivity of first semester scan, mostly abdominal, is about 56% of specificity in high-risk group, uh, in low-risk group and about 68% in a high, high risk group with a very high positive predictive value. And you can see from ectopia cordis is about most of them and rhabdomyoma is the least of them. And actually, we published several months ago the new ISPO guidance for fetal echo and it, it, could, it, it can be accomplished not only mid-trimester scan, by first trimester scan or early second trimester scan, by these five slices, transfer section of the fetal heart. Let's go to the first one of them. This is trans abdominal scan, you can see at the stomach and wherever rest and that. And here is one side with color, one without it. You can see here the stomach, you can see the ductus venosus, you can see the inferior vena cava, and the aorta, not the resolution, I have to admit, not as superb as the mid-trimester, but really this is enough or more than enough for the scanning. And this is the second one, with the four chamber view of, of the late scan. You can see here the, uh, the ejection of blood from the, the right atrium and, and the left atrium and all the components of the heart. And big, this is the same what we see here. This is the right ventricle, the left ventricle, the right uh, atrium and the left atrium, one can see here the pulmonary veins and with the color you can see the jets, the, the red jet from the right atrium and, and the left atrium. This is for uh, the four chamber view. And one, in, 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 this is another example. And what we can see here, uh, uh, here, which is quite better than it was before. Actually, is that even an advantage at, in our time to do it early, earlier because there are some machines with a slow flow which is really suitable for early scan. One you can see, you can see here the flow in the right ventricle 
in the left ventricle, you can see the septum, and even you can see here the pulmonary vein and the pulmonary flow in the lung. For the left ventricle outflow tract, as in the guidelines, you can see here, and here in every scan you can see the LVOT coming from the left ventricle, uh, and one can see even the, the aortic valve, and you can see here the flow, the reddish flow, the reddish flow from the LVOT here. And another example, in a different case, you can see here the LVOT, and you can see here the color, and the next step is the most difficult to achieve is the right ventricular outflow tract. You can see the main pulmonary artery and bifurcation in mid-treatment scan. And here one can see it again. It's not so easy to do and I really recommend to use the color and to see the bifurcation of uh, uh, the, 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 the pulmonary artery. And another example here, one can see here, you can see here, you can go very slowly and you can use your AVI to do that. And one can see here, if you go very slowly, you see the bifurcation of the pulmonary artery here. For example, you can see one here and one here. This is the main pulmonary artery and here you can see the bifurcation of the pulmonary artery, the two pulmonary arteries. And the last one, the C three vessel in the trachea view. Again, one can see it here. You can see here. This is the uh, main pulmonary artery and the, the two arteriosus. And on the right for it, you can see the uh, aortic arch. And on the side, you can see the inferior vena cava. Let's do it from here. The main pulmonary artery and the two arteriosus. The aortic arch the trachea, and the superior vena cava. And sometimes even better, you can see the, the four chamber view, you can see the LVOT, and then you can see the three vessel and the tracheal view. We, uh, we cannot depict here the, 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 the pulmonary artery, and the, pulmonary artery, the main pulmonary artery, the main pulmonary arteries, but you can see how beautiful we, uh, you can get uh, with this. And sometimes, as I said, the advantage of uh, the slow flow, you can see the timing box and the uh, internal mammary arteries coming out, uh, so the subclavian arteries here. And it's, you can see even because, as I said, the slow flow is suitable for that. And this is again all what we need for the scanning. As I said in my previous talk, there is an advantage of the slow flow, not only uh, for um, the heart, but also for the veins that come in the precordial veins here. You can see here the inferior vena cava. You can see here the ductus venosus. Here you can see the azigos vein. And at the end of the cycle, you can see here the bifurcation of the aorta. If you add to your, if you add for, to your scan, uh, uh, the longitudinal approach for examination of, of the heart. One can see beautifully the, um, uh, the, the bifurcation. Now let's have several examples of, uh, of a very early. You can see here, this is a case of hypoplastic left heart. Here, you can see here, this is the, you can see here, this is the right ventricle on, on this side. You can see here the right ventricle and here in the left ventricle. Look here, the right ventricle here and the left, this, the small left ventricle, an example of a cleft heart. And when you use the color, one can see, you see the retrograde flow, the red retrograde flow of the aorta because of critically stenose aortic valve and you can see the ba backflow in, uh, in, in, in the aortic arch and you can see here the main pulmonary artery which is dilated in, in this occasion. More than that, 
actually what you can see here you can see only one flow from uh, the atrium to the ventricle because there is no flow on the left side only the right side gets some um, this reddish flow in a case of early hyperplastic left out here we have bilateral nexus which i think uh, we have a clue for some heart anomalies and i like to use always uh, 3d or 4d and what you can see here you can see here a larger jet on the right ventricle and a smaller jet uh, in the left ventricle and what you can see here that we have only one big vessel in the three vessel in trachea view you don't see here um, uh, the aorta just because uh, it, it's so tiny in a case of plastic left heart and we can see longitudinally if you look very very carefully here you can see a glimpse of uh, the stenose and a back flow in the aortic arch as I can will show you just here you can see here in the upper part you can see only a retrograde flow in a stenose aorta in a case of 16 weeks of gestation and again when I use this you can see here there is a teeny uh, aortic arch with a retrograde reddish flow in a case of your plastic left arm this is right aortic atresia you can see a large uh, vessel coming uh, from uh, from uh, the uh, right ventricle in a case of gain with very wide nuclear translucency and you can see here in red only aortic atresia with a very teeny aorta and a retrograde flow through the aorta in a case another case of aortic stenosis or aortic atresia it can be on the opposite side this is a plastic right heart you can see here this is a left ventricle at 12 week of gestation this is the left ventricle this is the right very very narrowed uh, atretic um, uh, right ventricle and with the advent of the color here and with this 3D, what we can see here. What you can see here, uh, this is the blue jet, only entrance of blood from the left atrium to the left ventricle. And what you can see here, you can see here, this is the red one. This is the aorta, dilated aorta, because there is no flow in the main pulmonary artery in this case of early hyperplastic right heart. This is a very, very rare case. One can see here on the left side, this is the left ventricle, this is the right ventricle, right atrium, left atrium, you can see a tumor in, in the left ventricle. And while using the color and the stick, you can see entrance of blood to the right ventricle, very, very uh, narrow jet from the right atrium because of, of this tumor and actually what you can see here coming only from the right right heart and very very you know narrow uh, aorta with with a retrograde flow in the aorta because of this tumor in the left ventricle quite common is the uh, early case of the trilogy of fallo one can see here that is only one vessel overriding vessel this is the right ventricle, the left ventricle. This was proved to be um, the trilogy uh, of Fallo here. One can see here, you see, coming from both ventricles, overriding aorta of, of the trilogy of Fallo early. And one can see here, from the literature, you can see here the superior vena cava. Here, this is normal. This is the narrow pulmonary artery, the, uh, the dilated aorta, the overriding aorta. It is a beautiful case of dilated aorta, overriding in, uh, uh, in first semester, in a retrograde flow 
in a narrow pulmonary artery here and here. So all of them just uh, exemplify the, the, our ability to see an, another case of the tetralogy of a law. And this is a very uh, narrow pulmonary artery, the tetralogy of a law overrides and uh, uh, over on the VSD in the tetralogy of a law. In early case, in 13 reconstitution, only one vessel coming out of both ventricles, the right one and the left one. This is a persistent tuncus arteriosus communis at a, a very, very early stage, overrides uh, the VSD. And this is transposition of the great arteries very early. One can see here, one can see here the, uh, this is the aorta on the right side coming from the right ventricle and here you can see the pulmonary artery overrides uh, the right ventricle and the left ventricle. In a case of detransposition, the, uh, uh, the pulmonary artery coming out from both ventricles and the aorta from uh, uh, the, the right ventricle in, in detransposition of the great arteries. Quite common to see that is the um, aberrant right subclavian artery. You can see the 3D in 2D. Here is a, a 3D uh, example of a, of, of a, a ARSA in this case, which you know uh, dictate follow-up and evaluation. This a case is not that easy to detect. It's only 12 weeks of the station, so one can see only one ventricle here, one vessel. And what is the most important thing to me was that I couldn't see here in a case of, of a, a heterotaxy, I didn't see properly um, uh, the drainage of the pulmonary veins into the left atrium. And you can see even in the, in the regular color, I was not sure what's going on. And here again, as I told you before, the advent of the slow flow in this case, one can see, you can see here, there is no connection between the pulmonary veins and the left atrium. And you can see here that we have a similar uh, right and left right and left atrium in a case of heterotaxy with the right isomerism. This is a case, again, of heterotaxy syndrome, a complicated case in 13 weeks of gestation, left isomerism, and one can see here, uh, you can see here the nuchal uh, edema and the nuchal blebs, and when we go further here, one can see easy, that we have here only one, one uh, we can see here only one valve. This is an AV canal, and it looks like that both of them are similar. And once again, with the color, we see one jet here, only one jet here. And what we can see more, there is no. Uh, in fear of cava, which is interrupted in fear of cava in heterotaxy syndrome with left isomerism. And one can see here that, that you can see here only, you see the, the hemi azigos vein coming um, uh, to the superior vena cava. There is no in fear of cava. And uh, again, with the, with the stick, one can see here that there is, let's, let's take this picture, this slide for example, there's only one jet coming from the common atria into the common ventricle, and you can see here it's that uh, the, uh, oh, both of the atria are left uh, atria in, in the case of left isomerism. More than that, the left portocaval shunt can be seen easily, this for example, is this here, uh, the umbilical vein, drained directly to the inferior vena cava, as can be seen here. All cases of um, veins anomaly can be depicted at this, uh, 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 
that early. It was a case, very old case, many years ago, of a supraventricular tachycardia of almost 100 beats per minute. You can see here the, the edema around the head, and we treated, uh, you can see here again, the, uh, the, uh, the SVT, and the reverse flow in, uh, because of, of, uh, of this, of, uh, in, uh, in the ductus venosus, but after treatment with digestin several days later, we got a complete recovery to the sinus rhythm of about 100 uh, beats per minute so early in pregnancy. So what I, my conclusion is that early first, uh, first semester, the a second semester, complete fetal acardiography can be achieved. And I think in the area of the NAPT in our area, we recommend, me and others, a combination of the nuclear translucency, the first semester uh, screening, with a complete targeted organ screening to detect many anomalies, especially anomalies of the fetal health system. Thank you.